Sensei once consoled a grief-stricken boy as his older brother prepared to leave for battle. He said, Child, why do you cry? You are both part of a family, and a family is a bond that cannot be broken by war, by strife, by force, or neglect. And more importantly, you are brothers, and brothers you shall remain, despite time, argument, and even distance. To this day, Master Splinter, collecting that medallion is one of the proudest moments of my life. I was very proud of you for that, Leonardo. But the adventure that followed your return home made me even more proud of all of you. You were proud of us? Yeah, we nearly broke the family apart. Sometimes, Raphael, adversity is necessary to strengthen a family bond and reminiscing one's hardships helps as well. Donatello, Michelangelo, why don't the four of you tell me the story of this helmet in your own words, so that you can see for yourselves how much you have all grown together. All right, I love this story. And that's because you were always a huge fan of the Night Watcher, Mikey. And why not, dude? The Night Watcher was pretty cool. Sure, he was a creepy loner and all that, but he was just one guy, and he was taking out entire gangs on his own. Go Night Watcher! I always thought he was pretty gnarly. Maybe, but the police disagreed. They thought his methods were too drastic and too violent. Raphael, did you really become the Night Watcher? Because you thought the police were not doing enough? Nobody was. You remember what it was like, Sensei? Crime was everywhere, and innocent people were scared. It wasn't right. So I decided to become the Night Watcher and give the criminal scum something to be afraid of. And besides, dude, that costume was styling. Well, Mikey, personally, uh, no offense, Raph, I never really liked the Night Watcher's style much. I prefer a more sophisticated, high-tech approach. Oh, what a surprise. But Don, you had sophisticated, high-tech enemies. That is true. That place was an electronics gold mine. I found a ton of circuitry I could use, and there were so many cool gadgets that I had to use the van to carry them all. No kidding. Our cash flow is a bit in the red, right? So I got a job playing Cowabunga Carl at children's parties. Cowabunga Carl? I'm so glad I wasn't here for that. Dude, you have no idea. I tell you, bro, these kids today, they're vicious little monsters. So I barely made it out of there alive, and I went to where Don was supposed to be waiting for me. But the van was gone. What are you complaining about? You made it to the van, okay? Yeah, by the skin on my shell. So it looks like you guys all managed to keep busy while I was gone. Totally. But it was so good to have you back, dude. Yeah, we really missed you. From the moment I saw you, I could see that your experiences in South America had changed you. Forced to rely only on yourself, you have grown a great deal. I remember I was so excited about telling you what had happened that we were having trouble meditating together. Truth be told, I was also eager to hear about your adventures. Just like that, I became a legend to those people. It was incredible. I felt so honored and so powerful. It was a shock to you then to return and discover that things would not be quite as simple at home. Yeah, family may make you stronger, but it can also drive you nuts. I wanted you to leave your brothers, but perhaps you were not yet ready. I thought a nice game of ninja tag, like in the old days, might help us train and bring us closer together. Man, I was way out of line that night. Yeah, we were both getting pretty hot-headed. You know, at first I was laughing because you guys were racing so pathetically. But when you started shouting at each other, bros, you got me real worried. It probably would have escalated too, but then we got interrupted. We did? Remember, dude? That ominous roaring sound? It was more of a screeching. Or a wail. Yeah, but a wail would have been more like, Aye! and this was more like a. Aye! I remember. 
You guys can stop now. And then we rushed over to where the sound came from. Well, I rushed over. You guys kind of followed along slowly. You ran off without us. You wanted to wait before doing anything. You wanted to jump blindly into danger. Uh, guys, whatever. Okay, so like, we had to bail since the cops were arriving. Also, we caused quite a bit of damage to the construction site, and that made it a hazardous place to stay at. That's when I noticed that strange black truck leaving the area. I said we should return to get your advice, Master. But Raph thought that was a dumb idea, and he went off on his own. Seeking knowledge is not a weakness, Leonardo. It is strength, and demonstrates the will to improve oneself. You of all should have known this, Raphael. Yeah, well, I know that now. Back then, I wasn't really listening. But, I've changed. Anyway, right after that, I went back out on the rooftop to check on the monster and- Oh, dude, you were worried about the monster? No, Pinhead. I was going to see how the cops would handle it. But when I got up there, the monster was gone. I heard a strange sound in the alley behind me. And just as I got there, I saw a foot ninja get into a black truck. So I decided to follow him. I followed that truck all the way to Winter's Tower, but there was like a dozen identical trucks in the parking garage. I couldn't tell which one was mine. Oh, this is the cool part. So tell us what you did then. I didn't have a choice. I had to go into the tower and investigate. Breaking and entering. Pure night watcher. I had to find out what was going on, didn't I? By sneaking into an office building owned by Maximilian Winters, one of the three richest and most powerful men in the world? But dude, he got all kinds of intel, right? Tell us what happened next, Raph. See? Now that was cool. Maybe. But he nearly got splattered all over Winters' driveway. You infiltrate a tower, eliminate hordes of ninjas, fight some wackadoodle warrior, and get your butt kicked. And this is the thanks you get? Raphael, we are not questioning your bravery or motives. At that time, we were just concerned for your safety. Yeah, yeah. Things were getting way out of hand. So I decided to go back and tell you guys what happened. Without mentioning Night Watcher, of course. We all decided to go back together. I suggested we try to enter the tower through the subway system, since it was less likely to be guarded. Oh, right, the underground. That was an adventure. Dudes, that was one of the coolest places I've ever been to. It almost makes you sorry they're the bad guys. See? That's why I left. You guys were all cooled out. We stuck our necks out and got nowhere. So you stormed off in a hop. Why not? You guys were just dragging me down. And when you left in anger, your departure cast a shadow on everyone else. So Master Splinter told me to track you down. A leader is not determined by appointment or assignment, but by his own actions. So in order to act like a leader, I had to bring everybody back together again. To help you with this, I assigned you a riddle. Some help. What's red with rage but green with envy? It made me even more frustrated and confused than I was before. I thought we managed to arrive at some kind of understanding. We did. Yeah, right. So explain what happened the next night. Splitting up was Don's idea. There were probably more monsters running around loose in the city. We had to find out how many there were, so it was only logical that we could scout more territory if we split up. That was a team decision. So what I don't understand is why you had to wear the Night Watcher costume that night, Raph. I was alone. And when alone, it felt better to be the Night Watcher. I was more comfortable that way. Meanwhile, I was checking on everyone to see how they were doing. I spoke to Mikey and Don, but I couldn't find Raph anywhere. Because he was someone else at the time, and none of us knew it. But I knew Raph always liked the Chinese part of town, so I went to look for him there. At least you were right about that. Of course, one of the reasons I like that area is there's always someone itching to pick a fight. You mean like the foot? In that case, it worked. Leonardo. Then, I believe your brothers may be in need of a leader. <sighs> well, then I did about the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. I admitted to you guys that I was the Night Watcher. Admitting you were wrong is a symbol of courage, my son. Yeah, but if it hadn't been for the Night Watcher, Leo wouldn't have been kidnapped. I should have listened. I should have been a better student.
You were often a difficult student, Raphael, but I never cared for you any less. We're family, Raph, and family is about forgiveness and understanding. Right on. You always forgive me when I screw up. You razz me about it, but you forgive me. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Besides, this was great news for me. What? You know what I mean. It was the first opportunity to test the new invention I was working on. Oh, yeah. Boy, that was lucky. Not. It was a microtransmitter. Raph was wearing one, and that's how Mikey and I found him. And you were wearing one too, Leo. So all we had to do was follow your transmitter signal to your location, and that's how we found the Footplan's underground base. No, really. I mean, who puts a self-destruct system in a cave? I still can't thank you enough for saving me back there. All of us did it together, bro. Still, thanks. Ah, knock it off, knucklehead. Anyway, the four of us were together again. So it was time for us to stop playing defense and be more aggressive on offense. And the most logical place to initiate that plan was Winter's Tower, which was where we went next, to have a talk with good old Max Winters himself. Dude, just how many members of the Foot Clan are there anyway? More than you can count. Anyway, we kicked their butts again, of course. Well, by then, we were getting a little tired. Well, maybe you were getting tired. <clears throat> uh, sorry. Go on, Leo. We took a sec to catch our breath and have a look around. It was a big tower, and we had a long, long way to go before the night was over. And that's when the portal began to open. The stars of Keegan aligned, and then a tremendous cosmological energy blasted its way across the galaxy, slammed into Earth's atmosphere, and landed on the tower's portal receiver, indicating that Winters had already started the ceremony. We're there. Remember, tech head? Keep all that mojo stuff to yourself, all right? <laughs> tech head. What? It's funny. Gee, sort of a South American version of Atlantis. It was like blood in the and I had to pay a price. We were cursed that day. Finally. That was simply awesome! I never thought we'd be able to pull it off, but we did it! You got that right, bro. And we did it. The four of us, together as a team. You know, that day we learned a whole lot. It's changed us all for the better, and made us who we are today. Hey guys, I always wondered, what kind of food is there in a monster realm? What? <laughs> Don't ever change, Mikey. Max Winters had given his life a meaning by trying to fix his past. Maybe that's what broke the curse. Yeah, that was pretty creepy. The guy started floating, and then he vanished, like dust. I thought it was... serene. You would, wouldn't you? See, I thought it was... Raphael. Nice. I thought it was nice. Winters, or Yoto, was a brave man who sacrificed everything to correct the mistakes of his past. I am honored to have his helmet, just as I am honored to call the four of you my sons. Wow, Splinter sure loves hearing us tell that story. Yeah, that's why I love telling it to him. It sure was bad at the time, but it made us way stronger too. That's because we're a family, guys, and there ain't nothing stronger than that. It was a difficult lesson to learn, my sons. But I am so proud of you, because you all learned it together. <laughs>